Hi, my name is Lauren Bass, and I'm the founder and CEO of Wallabies Harvest, the farmer's market delivered to your doorstep. Our mission at Wallabies is to transform the food system and change the way consumers buy food and prepare healthy meals. Lollabies is an online farmer's market. We source produce, pasture-raised meats, dairy, eggs, and prepared foods from local farmers and artisans and deliver to customers' doorsteps. We all struggle to eat healthy. There are four main reasons that consumers cite that they struggle to eat well. Lack of time, lack of access to healthy options, confusion about what's actually healthy, and the fact that often healthy food just doesn't taste good. I thought you meant we have bad taste. <laughs> um, Lollaby solves all of these problems for their customers. We make it easy to eat healthy. We tackle the problem of lack of time through convenient online ordering, home delivery, and meal planning support. We address the issue of access to, to food, uh, healthy options by creating a robust supply chain of local farmers and artisans with amazing products and giving our customers single point access to this supply chain. We clear up confusion around what's healthy by putting transparency into the food system. We are connecting our customers to their farmers and we're also offering a curated assortment of unprocessed wholesome foods. And finally, taste. Ripe farm fresh food naturally tastes good. The pent-up demand for healthy options can be seen in the fact that local food is big and growing. In fact, it's growing over four times faster than the traditional food and beverage industry. We did a bottom-up market sizing to determine that the market for local foods in the U.S. is $9.5 billion this year. The company was founded by myself and my mom. I grew up on a farm and have six years of farm management experience. And most importantly, I have a lifelong dedication to growing local food systems. I got my MBA at Kellogg and I went to Princeton. My mom has 30 years of farm management and business operations experience and recently sold her business on our farm to focus exclusively on Lullabies. We have amazing advisors. Jody Crawford was one of the first 50 employees at Webvan and Bill Russo was the director of supply chain and logistics for Farm Fresh to You. We have traction. We've achieved these results with just 200,000 in self-funding and zero marketing spend. In the past 12 months, we've grown our customer base by over 500%. We have over 250 customers, and we've grown our revenue by 565%. Our current annualized revenue run rate is 350,000, projected to be at 450,000 by year end. The most exciting part of our results is that we have loyal customers. Our customer retention rate is 93%. The current market leaders is only 70%. We know that this customer retention is the key to success in our industry, and we are well on our way to converting consumers into lifelong Lollabies customers. Looking forward, we project to have gross margins of 43% at scale and operating profit margins of 18 to 20%. This growth shows expansion into new markets, and um, we are raising a $600,000 convertible note with a 20% discount rate. Moving forward, uh, we will be investing these funds into four main areas to grow the business. Hiring and building the team. Our most important hires in the, in this year will be a director of sales and a farmer relationship manager. We will also be building a, a pr pr proprietary front end and back end technology platform. The front end will have a front end website and mobile app to drive conversion, basket size, and customer loyalty. And the back end will help us bring the efficiencies into the operating, into the purchasing, fulfillment, and distribution systems. We'll be expanding geographically to the entire Bay Area by the end of this year and into additional markets um, in the end of 2014. And finally, customer acquisition. We will be investing in sales and marketing to grow our customer base and build a brand. We project to have 3,500 customers by the end of 2014 and over 12,000 at the end of 2015 as, um, once we've expanded into our second market of Los Angeles. You're out of time. Okay. If you got a last slide. No, go. yeah, just I'm ready to take questions. Okay, good. Thank you. And you can hold on to the mic. Okay. Thank you. And uh, Jason put the lights back up. Good. So um, our fifth judge, I told you, was going to be late. Sorry. Got here just, <laughs> he got here a few minutes ago, and he got to hear the whole bit, so he'll be involved in this. But first of all, I'd like to, I'd like to have you uh, stand up and introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, sorry, I was a little late. Um, my name is, yeah. My, na uh, my name is Nilesh Chavadi, and um, I am an early stage VC uh, partner at uh, Double Rock. Uh, we are also a new fund, and uh, we invest in enterprise 
a cloud computing, um, a little bit of consumer uh, on the seed stage side. And um, my expertise is mostly on the operation side uh, and uh, financial strategy business side. Great. Thank you for being here. So we'll let uh, Lauren keep the mic. I'm sorry we only have one mic tonight. And uh, we'll start with questions from the judges. And if you could shout your questions out. Paul and you, Scott, anybody got a question? Paul, please. So the concern I have about what you're doing, first of all, I like what you're doing. Your strawberries are fantastic. So obviously they're local drum and local harvest. But tell me how you're going to scale this thing into LA and then scale it into multiple other markets. Because clearly, the individuals involved, you and your, and your team today, you've got to replicate that in every location where we make this work. So um, there are the best, so which, is there a certain part of the business that you're particularly concerned about that I can address, or I can just talk about the two parts? Okay. Number one is how do you scale the team? That's okay. the first thing, with the same passion and the same focus. Okay, the second thing is how do you scale the logistics? So I'll address the, um, the team side. So when I started this, I did not know any farmers in the Bay Area. I'm originally from Cleveland and grew up on a farm in Cleveland. So I just went from farmers, to far farmers market to farmers market and introduced myself to farmers. So our plan to move forward as we expand into LA, Portland, and Seattle is to go to those markets and hire people that actually have years of experience and connection in that market in the farming community. So somebody who's run a farmers market for 20 years or somebody who's working in farming associations and knows the farmers in the area and has those relationships already built. So in that way, I actually think we could be at an advantage on the supply side as we expand, because when I started, I didn't have one relationship with a farmer. So if we have people that have long-term relationships with the farmers, they'll be able to quickly build up the supply chain. And now that we have proof of concept in San Francisco, it'll be really easy to get the farmers on, because we, get, we have numbers. We can show them that we can increase their bottom line and save them. Going to farmers markets is so hard and it's so resource intensive that if they could even move away from that and, and get more margin selling through lullabies, they will. So we've got time for one more question and we'll do Sorry. feedback. Anybody have any questions? Sean, please. Yeah, congrats on the progress of the business so far. Thanks. Um, such little funding. Hold on, um, I mean, let's, we'll just, I'll hand the mic over and I'll hand it back to you. Just start with you. Yeah, congrats on the progress of the business with only 200K of funding. Um, it's great that you have someone from WebVan that's an advisor, because I guess they're an example of what doesn't work in this business. So, you know, it, it's amazing what you've accomplished with no marketing spend, but I think that one of the big reasons they failed was they spent so much money in marketing and had a lot of churn in their customers. How do you, how do you scale this without spending a lot of money in marketing, and how do you keep these customers retained over time? So the customer retention is what we've done really well. We have an amazing service, and actually I just found out we have a customer that was on the, uh, Pete is, I found out, one of our customers who I've never met. But um, we've done a really good job with the customer retention um, through having amazing product, really good quality control. But in terms of the, the customer acquisition, so Doty, who headed up a lot of the marketing at Webvan, said that they just threw money stupidly at marketing. They sponsored Pac Bell Park. They were completely untargeted. So comparing us to, I mean, we'll be really targeted in our marketing and specifically it's through grassroots marketing and going through partnerships. I have a slide on marketing and it's, you know, going through um, partnerships with local organizations where our target customers are, like the Golden Gate Mothers Group. We've gotten a lot of our customers through that. So there's a lot of even guerrilla marketing that we can do that's not expensive to get access to customers. And a lot of it is through being part of the community and working with organizations. Even going to companies, um, like an investor that's looking at the company works at Logitech and we could potentially work with their benefits programs. And um, the same way they subsidize gyms, they may subsidize healthy eating. So there's definitely ways to, to grow the customer base and not have to spend like Webvan, Webvan did. Okay, so I'm gonna take the mic from you because this feedback session is non-rebuttal. So even if Lauren had the mic, she couldn't say anything. So we're going to start here with Nellis, Alan, and Sean, and then, and then go over to Pete and uh, Paul, please. Um, whatever I heard, I, I did check you guys out before um, uh, today. Uh, my only feedback is I've seen similar businesses out of Chicago uh, where, you know, Midwestern uh, culture kind of, you know, uh, so I'm seeing some activity in that area, but I'm, I'm just not sure if, if you have the right market. Uh, 
and, and going back to the, uh, I think Webvan had a logistics problem as well. They underestimated the logistics aspect of this business. Uh, so that would just be my feedback. Congrats on your success. This looks really awesome. Um, I would be a customer. But as an investor, you know, I think, well, let me, let me give you th some things to think about. And I'm sure you will, you will encounter these questions or these issues in the future. But, you know, when, when you build a business like Facebook, each additional node get, makes the rest of the network really valuable. But I'm not sure that you have that kind of scalability. So as an investor, that would be a big concern. I mean, each additional customer doesn't make the existing customers more valuable. It's just another incremental revenue boost. Um, the other one is just, um, you know, you, you, we've, I've seen these models before. I think you approach it in a, in a more artful way and your marketing is better. Um, maybe your packaging is better too, but there's not, you know, I would be really concerned about, you know, sustainable, persistent, competitive advantage. You know, that this, it's not a model that can't easily be copied. So I, try to, and it, that's why my first concern is, is related to this, right? There are a lot of natural network effects for purely digital businesses, and it's not so, not the case with this type of business. And what other things can you build in to create a, a more powerful competitive advantage or some moat around your business? Yeah. Okay. Sean? Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, great progress on such a little capital. Um, you know, one reason that I focus on B2B businesses is retention is more predictable than in a consumer business. So if you solve a pain point that's, that uh, is a major issue for businesses, they will pay to solve it forever. So I, I do agree that you know, over time, if you are successful, it could be replicated and your retention will probably take a hit. And so in order to grow, the challenge is uh, you not only have to replace what you lost, but then you have to keep growing on top of it. So um, that's my feedback. Okay. Get my exercise here tonight. Pete? Hi. Uh, so, yeah, full disclosure, uh, I am a little bit customer. We have been for over a year now. I mean, we must be in the first hundred and something people, I think, right? So I, I had no idea Lauren was going to be here tonight. Uh, Great to put a face to the produce that we receive every week. Uh, now I'm going to be thinking about my purchase having a face, which is sort of weird. Um, so I, I thought it was a good presentation for sure. Uh, you know, I, I wish uh, you could talk a little bit more about, again, your competitive advantages. I mean, it used to be that everyone had their milk delivered every week or every day, and we don't do that anymore. So why did that go away? Why? will your model continue to succeed? I mean, it sounds great to have vegetables and produce delivered straight to you, and, and it is, it's, it's terrific. Um, but, you know, why will more people be adopting this? Why is this more desirable than a model that people, for the most part, are very comfortable with going to the supermarket, picking stuff out for them? I mean, this is the Bay Area, this is a perfect place to start a business like this. Um, you know, I'm, not sure that it would be entirely as, as scalable. I mean, you know, when, I, when you talk about these increased numbers, I think, boy, you're gonna have to buy a lot of trucks. You're gonna have to get a lot of trucks, you know? No? Okay. Yes, we're still in. Okay. We don't buy any trucks. Okay, well, that's great. So, but if you can, but if you can talk about, you know, I mean, you know, the, how you can scale and how it will be, you know, you'll maintain your competitive uh, advantages, that, that would be great. Paul, please. Ask her. What's that? Yeah, <laughs> so there's, there's two things that, that uh, I'm concerned about. Uh, one is, um, as an investor, you didn't touch at all on how I'm going to make any money in this deal. Right? That's the first thing. And that, at the end of the day, is what I'm concerned about. Uh, the second thing is, is that uh, I think you're going to need someone on your team soon who is a logistics expert because you will live, eat, you will live and die based on can you scale this logistically? That's really the key. Uh, I think you can go out, uh, as you described, and find good people in the local markets. And if you make them part of the business and part of the ownership of the business, I think you can find those folks. But I don't think uh, you can do that if you don't have a really, really slick logistics network in place that can get that food to my door when I expect it every time, every day. 
By the way, I would use this service if you were down on the ballot. Okay, so now comes the hard part for the judges. We're going to ask them to uh, to think a minute and uh, hold their cards.